I just have a few questions about um, your thoughts on what the uh, NFL is doing in terms of um, its its safety precautions. Okay. So yeah. the first one I have is, um, you know, just kind of straight up, how do you perceive the current NFL safety precautions? Uh, do you believe players are being uh, treated um, with the, the proper care, or do you think there's a little more that they could be doing to prevent injuries? So when it comes to the NFL, I think that they're I think that they're being given better care than they were previously. And I, you, you can attribute some of that to the some of that to, you know, more knowledge over time in the NFL becoming more aware and more sensitive to their players. But at the same time, the NFL is a business. And personally, I believe that for a large portion of it, they've done a lot of the care and stuff for their players because they were caught so badly for it early, like earlier on, like around the two thousands or so, like we've seen that movie concussion mm-hmm. with Will Smith, which, you know, took, which was kind of that based on true story of, uh, of the, of the whole, of the whole ordeal that went down there. And basically because the NFL got caught for how badly they handled health, the health of their players before, I think they had to step up and, you know, kind of go up above and beyond in order to show that, Hey, we, we messed up before, but now we're going to make up for it. All right. That's uh, yeah. I think that's fair. Uh, good, good, solid answer there. Um, the next one I have is, um, you know, we're talking about like really dirty hits. So uh, in the previous oh, yeah. interview I did, I talked about um, Vontae's perfect. And, oh yeah. Like someone like him. Um, do you think that when a player makes a very dirty hit, like something like clearly intentional straight to the head, um, do you think they should be banned for at least four games? So when it comes to Vontez Perfect, uh, there's no question in my mind that he's a dirty player. I mean, he is he just embodies that that whole mentality. I think he's even come out and said that that's just how he plays. And, you know, you talk about, you know, the impacting certain players. I mean, when you look at a guy like Antonio Brown, for example, which, you know, he had that hit on and so brutally. I mean, look at how Antonio Brown has, you know, changed as it has changed in generals like since that hit, obviously. It's impossible to do a true correlation of how things have gone since uh, of, you know, things that have happened in his life since that hit. But when you actually look at it, you know, and look at it in interviews with Antonio Brown before the before the incidents going on, he was very he was very positive speaking when it came to his situation in Pittsburgh. He, he always talked up about Ben Roethlisberger and coach Mike Tomlin. He never seemed to talk down about them. And then after that hit, he kind of had. You know, he he obviously had his own personal struggles, but there were there were also some you know very crazy off the field scandals that he got himself yep. into as well. So when yep. it comes to a guy like Vontez Perfect, uh, and it it has a history of it, I would say like when you know that there is a a recorded history of it, I think that there is an appropriate uh, suspension uh, that you can throw in place. I think four games for especially a guy like him is warranted uh, for a first offense, especially if you can try to see that maybe a guy was, you know, flying out of control and it was just too, you know, out of too out of position players. You can make a case, but uh, w- when it's warranted, I think four games is a, is a decent punishment that you could put in place. All right. Fair enough. Good answer. Um, yeah. So the next one I have is, you know, over the years we've seen the NFL put, you know, a few more safety precautions in place. Yeah. Um, you know, do you think these have taken away from the game at all? Or do you think that, um, they're necessary and uh, provide a, uh, a a pathway for uh, more player success. So when it comes to the NFL penalties, I, I find it that, you know, in some cases, you know, obviously, you know, if we went back to the NFL of the seventies of the sixties and seventies, like most of the players like we, we'd have today, wouldn't even be able to like stay on the field. It'd be, it'd be mayhem out there. So I think that the NFL has made the correct strides in trying to, you know, make the game more safe and avoid all these dangerous injuries and stuff like that. But what at there, there, it does come a point when a guy like Clay Matthews, it gets penalized all the time for, you know, r- roughing the passer calls after, you know, while in the, while in the actual act of sacking the quarterback, while he still has the ball in his possession. I think that there is a case there that, you know, it, it has gotten a little bit, you know, too much. And while I am all for player safety, I'm also still in it for the game of football. Like we are Mm -hmm. football fans watch because of that contact, because of that, you know, violence that goes on in the field, whether you can control that violence and try to make it, you know, more, more like better, better off for the players. That's obviously a tough, tough road to kind of navigate. But when you can get on that, when you can get on that area and try to figure out how to do it, I, I personally think that the refs have, you know, 
made it worse and the calls have made it worse, but I am for player safety, but yeah. I gotcha. Yeah, mm. no, that makes sense. Honestly, I think uh, overall, you know, you want to be safe but at the same time. You want to, you want to keep it. Yeah, keep absolutely. It, keep it real with them. Um, yeah. So I got the next question I have, um, you know, the, what made me think of this question was the game uh, last year. It was the Giants against the 49ers at MetLife. Okay. Um, I think about five players got injured in that game. So, um, and, and one of the main, one of the main uh, talking points of that game was the, the surface of the field. Um, yeah. Do you think that turf fields uh, should be either banned or um, changed to grass to make it more safe? Or do you think grass is a better alternative? Uh, give me your thoughts on that. So I think turf fields, when they're done correctly, can be effective and are and are good. It's when they don't go according to plan is when things go bad. I mean, you you if you look back on, I think the NFL had a Hall of Fame game a couple of years ago. I think the Packers are scheduled to play in it, and they were unable to play in the game because the playing surface and the paint that was put on the field was messed up beforehand. You know, when when it comes to managing a turf field, very specific things have to go into play. So when it comes to it, you have to be you have to be aware of that. And, you know, you have to make sure you're taking care of, you have to make sure everything is secured into place and everything is going to be able to survive the impact that each of these players are putting out on onto the field of play. You know, AstroTurf, which was the, you know, original turf that came into play, you know, and it was made famous because it was used in the Houston Astrodome. You know, it was a, it was kind of like a carpet. It wasn't anything that, it wasn't, it wasn't very friendly. It wasn't forgiving for athletes. And they had to, and they had to adapt. Some of the some of the better turf that we see now, it's definitely better off for athletes. And I think if it's done correctly, then it can, I think you can keep it going. But then, but when you see some of these like old old fields, I think you have to try to renovate and try to fix those. Fair enough. Yeah, I think so too. I think turf is good. Um, I yeah, when, when, um, when it's when it's done right. Yeah. When it's done right, yeah, I think turf works. Otherwise, I mean. I yeah you know, I'm, I'm more I definitely like soccer as well but I think grass fields for for it are definitely better but um, when, when it comes when it comes to baseball as well I'm 100% all for grass fields all for natural fields I'm oh, yeah. I've been seeing I've been seeing a trend in baseball of them trying to put in a lot more turf fields and it, it's more to make it's more to make all purpose fields and so so it can be like yeah. oh we have this baseball field but in the fall the soccer players can play on it and yeah, yeah and, and while that may be more economical and better off for the players. When it comes to a baseball player, I'd rather play in a grass field because it, ha- yeah, yeah. For for the NFL, I think both both definitely fit. Um, the last Absolutely. question I have, the last question I have is about um, concussions. Uh, okay. Do you think the current Do you think the current concussion uh, safety protocols are good, or do you think they should be improved upon? So I, I, I think that they have obviously been improved upon up to this point. Uh, you can make a case that that yeah, you could do more going forward. I mean, I look back to Julian Edelman in Super Bowl, in Super Bowl 49 when he absolutely just got cracked on the head uh, like going over the middle of the field and somehow was able to finish the game. Now, while he did catch the game-winning touchdown for us, there's no way that he actually should have been able to do that. I mean, going if you, just looking off of it. And what's tough is in those do-or-die situations when it comes down to it and saying what, what's going to be difficult is deciding, oh, oh, you may have a head injury here, but we're, it's, there's kind of a gray area to – Hey, the game's on the line. We need you. And it, it's going to be, and it's going to really be, do, do you sacrifice the future for the present? And w- while, yeah. while many fans will say, yes, uh, a lot of players looking back on it may have second thoughts about it, but I, I think the NFL is doing a decent job right now. Obviously when more, when more knowledge and more technology comes out, I think that's something we definitely need to look into. Uh, another interesting thing as well is that uh, as part of the NFL's original concussion, you know, crackdown, I think, which happened, uh, there was a, there there have obviously been multiple crackdowns, but one specific one happened around 2013 where they banned like alternate helmets. Now those are making a comeback in 2022. But what was interesting about that is for that they ended up saying, hey, we're just going to have one team just wear one helmet because we we, we want to have them all you know specified to these concussion measures. Now they're now they're allowing more helmets that are being made to you know they're allowing teams to wear these alternate helmets, meaning that the majority of helmets being made nowadays probably are up to those standards. So uh, hopefully, hopefully with the, with more technology coming out, we're able to adapt and go forward with it. All right. 